Climate change deniers continued to promote the myth that the amount of CO2 emitted into the atmosphere from all human activities is but a tiny fraction of the CO2 emitted into the atmosphere from volcanoes. In this video, we smash this myth to smithereens. There are several human activities that cause CO2 to be emitted into the atmosphere. By far the biggest contributors are the burning of fossil fuels and cement production. Together these currently account for the emission of about 37 billion metric tons of CO2 each year. The other sources contribute roughly another 5 billion metric tons of CO2 annually. For those of you who prefer to think in English units, note that a metric ton is 1,000 kilograms or about 2,200 pounds. So a metric ton is 10% bigger. The big question is how does this compare with the CO2 emission from volcanoes? We now have very good estimates of the CO2 emissions from the 91 most active above sea level volcanoes, and we know that these emit about 39 million, not billion, million metric tons of CO2 into the atmosphere annually. These all emit into the lower atmosphere, although the CO2 will eventually mix throughout the atmosphere on account of convection. In addition to to CO2, these volcanoes emit a lot of ash and sulfur dioxide. The ash falls out of the lower atmosphere relatively quickly. The sulfur dioxide transforms into fine particulates that reflect some of the incoming solar radiation. So they have a cooling effect that counteracts the warming from the CO2 emitted from these surface volcanoes. But the sulfate particulates wash out of the atmosphere fairly quickly also. Ocean ridges and other underwater sources of CO2 are somewhat more difficult to estimate, but we need to remember that much of the CO2 emitted by underwater sources never makes it into the atmosphere. The best estimates are that about 20 million metric tons of CO2 enter the atmosphere from these sources annually. In the graph on the left, that is represented by the purple line just above the x-axis, while the green line shows the contribution to atmospheric CO2 from the burning of fossil fuels and cement production. At present, the contribution to atmospheric CO2 from human causes is somewhere between 60 and 70 times that from volcanoes. However, we do know that occasionally the Earth experiences a very powerful explosive volcanic eruption that ejects a significant amount of both CO2 and sulfates into the upper atmosphere, the stratosphere. When this happens, there can be a significant but temporary measurable impact on the Earth's climate. The most recent explosive volcanic eruption that ejected significant amounts of material into the stratosphere occurred in 1991 when Mount Pinatubo erupted, sending a substantial amount of material into the upper atmosphere. Because this eruption was in the tropics, material from the eruption spread into the upper atmosphere in both the northern and southern hemispheres. Because substantial amounts of water vapor were emitted along with the sulfur dioxide and the CO2 in the eruption, the sulfur dioxide was transformed into very fine sulfate particulates. These particulates in the upper atmosphere reflected incoming solar radiation. This process tended to cool the atmosphere. The lower figure shows the extent of the reflection as a function of latitude and time, while the upper figure shows the extent of the reflection as a function of altitude and time. From the lower figure, we can see that the most intense reflection was limited to the tropics and that the overall effect of the eruption was short-lived, less than two years. Climate models predicted that this eruption might reduce global average surface temperatures by as much as 0.5 degrees centigrade. 
However, the observed global average surface temperature was much more modest. As we can see from the figure on the left, there is a hint of a decrease in the measured global average surface temperature in 1992 and 1993. But if it is real, it is much less than 0 0.5 degrees C. The reason for this is that in the short term, global average surface temperatures are affected by several short-term weather patterns as well as changes in the amount of CO2 entering the atmosphere from human activities. However, it's important to note that the 1883 explosive eruption of the Anak Krakatoa volcano did have a pronounced cooling effect on the planet that lasted for about two years. During that time, summer temperatures were much colder than normal and the winter was very harsh. So if conditions are right, explosive eruptions that will eject material into the stratosphere can have a significant impact on global temperatures. However, the, however these events are rare and the events and the effects are short-lived. There are three conclusions that we can make. First, volcanic activity that ejects material into the troposphere, the lower atmosphere, contributes far less CO2 to the atmosphere than the burning of fossil fuels and other human activities. These human activities generally produce 60 to 70 times as much CO2 as ongoing volcanic activity. Second, Rare explosive volcanic events that eject significant material into the upper atmosphere can have a short-lived cooling effect if conditions are right. And finally, the assertion of climate change deniers that the bulk of CO2 emissions into the atmosphere comes from volcanoes is just plain wrong. Thanks for watching. If you have found this video informative, please watch one of my other videos on climate change. Just click on the link below.